Thank you, Isabel. To the Middle East now, and a vessel laden with aid is nearing Gaza, whilst another ship is being prepared in Cyprus to ship even more into the region. The ship's named Open Arms. It's been on a 48-hour journey, towing a barge carrying 200 tonnes of water, medicine and food, equating to almost half a million meals. Joining us for more on this is the former UK ambassador to the UN, Sir Mark Lagrant. Thank you so much for your, for your time. This feels like extremely challenging efforts to try and get the right resources, food, medicine, water to people who desperately need it. And that is so difficult to do in practice. Absolutely. I think it's a sign of, of two things. I think it's a sign of how desperate the humanitarian situation is in Gaza. But I think it's a sign of how uh, desperate in many ways Western allies are to be seen to be doing something to alleviate the humanitarian crisis when they have been unable to persuade the Israeli government to institute a humanitarian pause, which would obviously be the most effective way of getting uh, aid into those who need it most in Gaza. Uh, so, Mark, it's one thing this vessel arriving there, but how long is it going to take for, for, for the, the food and the medicine to actually get to the people? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, there's no doubt that airdrops are not particularly effective. Not huge sums of uh, aid can get through, and they're actually dangerous. We've seen people killed when the parachutes fail. Uh, bringing in aid by ship is also not the most effective way. Um, we've seen this barge coming in from the EU, from Cyprus, um, but it can't get you know very close into the land. It then has to be transported, and then it's got to be distributed. Um, there's a further ship coming, and that's being done through an NGO called World Central Kitchen. But the UN operation, they are focusing on opening up more land routes from Israel into Gaza, because land routes are by far the most effective way of getting the volume of aid in and being able to distribute it once you're inside Gaza. So they're working on the Israeli government to try and open up a further um, crossing into Gaza in the north and also in the centre of Gaza where the Israelis have built um, a new road. Yeah, well, the At the moment, it's only about 150 trucks a day going in. There needs to be around 500. Well, the IDF have said that they've opened up multiple routes for aid uh, across land, sea and air. Uh, is, that, is, is that to be believed, do you think? Well, they certainly opened up one uh, new crossing, and that is, is positive, and they temporarily opened up a second crossing. All that is positive. They say they're going to flood aid into the, into the strip, um, but we haven't seen any evidence of that. And one of the problems is that Israel insists, I mean, for reasonable reasons, to inspect every single aid consignment going across the border. Uh, and that obviously slows things up considerably. How, how much confidence do you have that those people who desperately need the aid are going to get it? I mean, um, one European commissioner was saying um, there's famine already in Gaza and that could spread. Well, I think it is a big risk um, of that. We've already had about something like 25, 30 uh, people, including mainly children, who died of malnutrition already. There's another more than 500,000 who are sort of want what the UN calls one step away from famine. So I'm not confident at all that the sort of aid efforts that are being made are going to prevent more people dying of starvation. There's been several incidents um, reported of Gazans who are waiting for aid being shot by the IDF. Um, and, and then the US are saying they're going to build this floating dock to bring more aid in. But that could take two months for it to be fully functional. What, what, can, I, yeah. what, what can they do in the meantime? Well, I think in the meantime, one has to rely on the smaller ships, the sort of EU barge that's, that's going into Gaza. Um, and more pressing the Israelis to, to uh, allow more land crossings. Because, as you say, the Americans, who are talking about building a sort of substantial pier, a sort of mini port in Gaza, um, it's going to take at least two months to do that. Um, and so once that is built, it will be possible to bring in much larger ships, and that will make a significant difference. But in two months' time, a lot more people will have died unless more land crossings are open.